Welcome back. Earlier we spoke about the brush tool and the pencil tool. In this lesson we're going to continue on and talk about the color replacement tool and the mixer brush tool. Starting with the color replacement tool, I'm going to pull up a sample image to work on where we have a blue car. The color replacement tool is used to change the color of an object in a photo pretty simply and easily. It's not the most professional way to change colors in an image. Uh, there are more advanced ways to do it. This tool is not always going to give you the results that you're looking for, but it does work for simpler tasks. And it's something that's worth just giving a shot if you've got an easy image to change and, and uh, don't want to get into too much advanced editing. You know, it, this may do the job. So as you can see, the color replacement tool is a brush and it works much like any of the other brushes that we've already spoken about. You can right click, you can change the size of the brush, the hardness, spacing, all those same things that we're used to seeing. And the way the color replacement tool works is it goes off of whatever color you have selected in your foreground. Coming down here, I have black currently. So what we're going to do here is change the color of the car from blue to another color. We'll pull up the color picker and we'll change our foreground color to, let's say, green. Kind of a dark green. Okay. Now what happens is once you selected a color and you've got your color picker tool open with the brush options that you want selected, you can start painting over the color you're trying to replace. Now you can see Photoshop is taking the blue area that I have and essentially painting the green over it but without losing the highlights and reflections. You can see why this would work really for simple images. This particular image could it's a little bit more complex so we could have picked uh, maybe something a little easier. Now what you can see happens here we've gone over the chrome right here also. Uh, and it's going to start trying to change that too. So you're, you're trying to really paint over the colors that you're trying to replace. If you go over another color, it's going to try to replace that too. It's, it's basically going over whatever you're painting over. If I paint out here, it's going to try to change that green too. I think that gives you a pretty good idea of what we're working with here. Let's talk about the options that are involved with this tool. We move up. We have the brush size and hardness which we also get by right clicking and then we have mode the reason the color replacement tool works the way that it does without just simply painting over an object and, and completely replacing the color like a, like a paintbrush would is because of the blend modes when you're painting much like what, what we've done before when we've change modes or come to the the layer here and change the mode of the layer this brush essentially paints with a with a mode already selected here we have the color mode selected but you can change it to hue saturation or luminosity if you were to select hue the hue mode changes only the basic color itself it doesn't change the saturation or the brightness of the original color. This is usually useful where the colors are not really very intense and it really only makes subtle changes. In this particular image, it could work pretty well. And you can see it's working probably better than the color mode because this isn't really grabbing the chrome as much as the color mode did. The next option we have is saturation. Saturation changes only the saturation. The hue and the brightness are not affected. You would use this for reducing the intensity of a color or removing a color completely. I'm going to undo all of the changes we've made and we can take a look at a little bit of the change of saturation. Over here we have a darker blue on the door. If we just paint with the color replacement saturation on there on the door, 
you can see that it's essentially changing the saturation only. Okay, we'll undo that. And the next one is the color option, which is the one we started with. It's the default blend mode, and it'll change both hue and saturation at the same time. The brightness remains unchanged. This is usually the one that, that you'll use if you're using this tool. And then we have luminosity. Luminosity will simply match the brightness of the original color to the brightness of the new color. The hue and saturation remain unchanged. For instance, if we have a bright blue and we want to paint the green, which is a much darker, it's not really painting on the green, it's changing the brightness of the blue down to match what we have the green set at. We get a much brighter green, it changes the brightness in a different direction. Okay, now we'll go back up to the options, change this back to color, and then we'll talk about sampling. Now there are three options for sampling. The first one is continuous. This one's selected by default. The next one is once, and the last one is background swatch. Now I'll demonstrate what those do. Let's pick a new color. Actually, I want to show you another thing about picking colors. When you're doing a color, you can also choose something from the image. If you were trying to match the color of what you are changing to something that's in the image, you can hold down the Alt key, and that gives you the little color dropper tool, and you can select a color directly from the image. So maybe we want this to be brown. We'll change this this car to brown instead of green. Now we'll take a look at what the sampling does. With the first option, we have continuous. Continuous is what we saw already happening. Once you click on a spot, it grabs the color that you have and it will continuously keep checking what color you are painting over and keep replacing that particular color. But as we saw before, that can also grab onto the colors you don't want to change, like the chrome or the headlights here or the tires. So we'll undo that and take a look at the next option, which is once. When you have sampling once selected, Photoshop looks at the first color you click on. We'll click right here in this blue, and then it will only replace colors that are closely matching the color that you first clicked on. Now, when we paint over the lights and the bumper and the tire, it is not going to grab those. But what it also doesn't grab is where the blue of the car has gotten much lighter. It's saying, well, no, that doesn't match closely enough. So we won't grab that particular color. Now you're kind of left with a, a splotchy paint job here. And of course, you could always go back and resample by clicking on one of the lighter blue spots. And try painting over that. And if you were to do that, obviously you would have to keep sampling and keep painting, which you know, this is where when I said there was a, a more advanced way to do this type of editing, this is where you would want to use the more advanced methods in order to get all of these shades at the same time. Okay, and then the last option is background. And this one, you won't really use too much probably, but with this option, Photoshop will essentially replace whatever color is currently set as your background color. And we'll change this to a blue that could be in the, in the picture. And what this will do, let's, let's back this up a little bit. Is it will try to find the blue. Let me change this to green again so it's more obvious. It will try to find the blue that you have selected in the background and, and it will 
essentially try to paint over that. So you would try to pick a color that you that you want to replace as closely as possible in this, and then try to paint over there. So you can see that's not really very effective. It's not finding any of the blue that I had selected here. Try different shades. There we go. See that shade got it a little better. Now it's painting over the blue I have in the background with the green I have in the foreground. But that would be the least effective way to use this tool. But it is an option if you find a useful way to do it. Okay, let's go back to the top of that. And next in the options we have limits. Linux has three different options. Discontiguous, contiguous, and find edges. With contiguous being the default selected option. With contiguous selected, this means that the color replacement tool will only change the color of the pixels of the area where you are painting, where the cursor is touching. It won't affect any of the pixels outside of that that are separated by other colors. And what this means is that you have the little crosshairs that are in the middle of your brush. Photoshop is sampling right where those crosshairs are. If you come to an area that separates the colors, for instance this, if you don't, this bumper right here, if you don't roll your crosshair across the bumper, it won't grab the bumper. Now if you go across the bumper, with the crosshairs, it will actually grab the bumper. Now, in doing that, what you can also note is that, let me zoom in a little bit. In doing this, what you can also note is that it is not changing the blue on the other side of the bumper. Now, this is what contiguous means. It's only changing colors that are touching and are not separated by another color. If I paint down here, it will be the same thing. Now, if I go and change to discontiguous and paint, you'll see that now it's grabbing the blue on the other side of the bumper. Now, as long as I'm not rolling over the bumper, it won't sample that color. And now, this is part of the imperfection of this tool. You can see that it's getting some of the highlights, and that's because the highlights have blue in them. The ref it's reflecting blue from the car. So now let's zoom back out here and do that and talk about find edges. And find edges simply replaces the color along the areas that have your sample color but it does its best to preserve the sharpness of your edge and that would be for instance an area like right here where we have the edge of the hood and the in a drastically different color on the other side of it. Find edges just helps preserve the edge of the object that you're painting over. Okay, alrighty, now let's uh, come back up here, change this back to contiguous, and talk about tolerance. The tolerance setting really just determines how different a color can be from the sample color that you've chosen. So when we're talking about having the contiguous color, we've selected this particular blue right here, tolerance just says how different can we look at, or how different can the color be from that. If you chose a tolerance of 1, then Photoshop would be looking for exactly the color that you clicked on. The higher the tolerance, then the more lenient Photoshop is on how close that color can be. It, it basically will look for shades that get lighter or just similar to the color that you've chosen. And then anti-alias, you just really want to just keep that selected. It smooths out the edges around the areas that the color replacement tool is affecting. And the last thing we have on here is the tablet pressure for size. And that will affect the size of, of your brush as you're you know, adjusting your tablet pressure. Okay, and that's all for the color replacement tool. Let's move on to the mixer brush tool. Reset my colors. Okay, for the mixer brush tool, I'm going to open up a different stock image. 
just for the heck of it, I'll do a uh, painter's palette here and use this. All right, so we have the, the mixer brush tool selected. Now this tool is a really great tool for artists. I'm not going to go extremely in detail with this, um, and, and maybe I'll do a, a full lesson on this at another time, but there are a lot of great resources out there if you really want to learn how to use the mixer brush tool. What it's for is really simulating realistic painting techniques. Uh, for instance, mixing your colors on the canvas, uh, dipping brushes, you know, the paint, how, how wet your paint is, the strokes, all that. It's, it's really designed to try to mimic natural painting effects. So what we'll do is we'll come down here and we will create a new layer so we have something to paint on. And then up here we have the brush options which we should be pretty familiar with by now. Uh, I'm going to open up the, the full brush palette and select one of these actual paint brushes. Okay. And we'll come in here and we'll select a color. We'll do this red. And then the options that we have here, we have a load brush after each stroke and a clean brush after each stroke. Now what this means is if you were paint, if you imagine if you were painting, load brush after each stroke is if you were to dip the brush back in the paint after each time you painted a stroke. That's essentially what that does. Clean brush after each stroke would be if you were to paint strokes and then clean the brush off each time. How that works out is if you don't clean the brush and you just load it each time and you're painting with different colors, the colors will mix. They'll paint, they'll, they'll mix within the brush. The brush will paint new colors based on what you've done. Cleaning it means that it will paint a clean color of whatever you've chosen that time. And if we come over here and we take a look at these presets, these are presets of different styles of brush. So you can have dry brush, moist, wet, very wet. Um, choose your preset. You can choose a preset of wet. You can see here we have 50%. It's 50% wet. Um, load is basically when you load new colors, how much of it's going to load on there. So we've got half, 50% here. It'll load 50% of whatever new color we, we pick up. Um, mix is how much does that new loaded color mix with the existing colors that you have. Um, we've got just default, we'll leave that 50%. Flow here is the same as the regular brush tool, is how much paint is essentially coming out. How evenly, how fast does it come out of your brush. And then we have the uh, airbrush effects, which is you know, what we've talked about before, it works like an airbrush. Sample all layers is do you want to sample colors from all the layers or just the one you're on? And then the tablet pressure for size. Okay, so let's let's add some paint out here and see what that does. Um, let's get a little bit bigger brush. All right, we've got this wet brush and we're just essentially making big splotch. I'm gonna make a bigger brush. Big splotch of red paint. And it, it looks pretty much like when you're painting with a regular paintbrush at this point. Um, now let's go ahead and grab another color. Some blue out there. Make a splotch of blue over here. Now because we have this wet brush, let's take a look at what happens when we paint with the blue into the red. You can see it's kind of mixing right here and making a purple. You can see a little bit about how this brush kind of works like a paintbrush. Now we're mixing colors. Now we have that cleaning each time. So we essentially cleaned our brush off. So if we come paint again, we'll see it's still blue. If we do this again, let me paint some blue here, paint it into the red get this going on and now we've taken off the clean after each stroke come over here and we have purple left on our brush because it's already mixed and it's on our brush currently and now that that's actually not quite the same purple as what we were painting with here because we've loaded it with more blue now if we uncheck the load after each stroke and we do this again we paint in here get some 
some of this all mixed up. When you come paint down here, you can see it's more true to what this was. Let's uh, let's grab a new color, and mix some yellow into it. Yellow, paint the yellow into the blue. And come down here, and we have this mixed color. Now, the way you could clean your brush, if you don't have it cleaning or loading after each stroke, you can come over here and click under your color, and you could just clean brush. Now we're painting. Well, we don't have a color selected, so we pick a new color, and now we're going to be painting with a fresh color. Okay. Now, the other way that this works is we go and we'll clean the brush. And we can come in here and paint over this. Now we picked up this kind of a color. This is how it really works like a real brush. And now we were able to mix some colors on the palette, dip the brush into that color, and come over here and paint. Okay, I hope that that kind of shows you a little bit about how this tool works. Um, it's pretty powerful. Uh, it's got a lot of options. You can go through here and see what, how the different brushes affect the way the paint loads or, and mixes. Um, and just play around with this a little bit. And, and it really works great if you have a stylus and are able to, to do it with that. All right, so that, that'll be it for this lesson on the color replacement tool and the mixer brush. Let me know what your thoughts are. Did you feel like uh, I covered everything fairly well? Should I add to it? Uh, would you like to see full lessons on anything in particular? Um, all right, thanks again. We'll see you in the next lesson.